Hi guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel. You know what I'm making today? Something that I had a vision about. I was on my raisin Simone about this. It's about to be South Africa's ultimate pizza. A Buddha verse roll on a pizza. Yes, so let's go. We're gonna start with making our own dough, but you can buy this from the store. First things first, I'm gonna need to bloom my. What do they call this? Yeast. I'm gonna start with three teaspoons of yeast. Did you know that if you put your yeast in the fridge, it stays fresh out for long? I'm going in with some sugar. Let's go two teaspoons, three teaspoons. I like my doughs a bit sweet, like. Oh my. Yeah. And then I'm gonna go in with about a cup of warm water. I'm just filling up the bowl basically. Whisk and squeeze. And set it aside so that it activates and forms up. Moving on to our big boy. I've got some bread flour. You can also use like cake flour. It does change the texture and it might change the amount of water I need. So I'm gonna go in with three cups. I think that will be enough. I'm just guesstimating these heat cups that I'm using. Oops. Three, your girl is clumsy. Then we need salt, two teaspoons, one, two. Nothing I hate more than like unseasoned bread. Our yeast is nice and a bloomed. You can see right there, it's foamy. Add it straight into the dough. Mix that in. I'm trying to clean the bowl with the dough. Flour my surface, flour my hands. And now we start kneading the dough. What makes a good pizza dough, according to me, is like how much you knead it so that the gluten is activated. Like the texture of the dough needs to be chewy. Just trying to get the dough in my hands like in the head. It's a sticky situation. But when you use cake flour, you might need to knead it a bit longer because it's not as glutinous. And when it's fully kneaded, it will also be like less sticky and more smooth. I haven't made sourdough in so long. That's why you haven't seen anything on the sourdough therapy. Like right now, making sourdough sounds daunting. I'm gonna oil it. Coat the bowl so it doesn't stick to the bowl. Coat the top of it. And I try and stretch it out like this. Let this arise for however long it takes to double in size. Reduce, reduce, recycle. I'm using my grocery plastic bag. Caramelized onion. What's a Buddha horse roll? Like, I feel like what makes or breaks you, yo, 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 yo. What I think makes or breaks a good Buddha horse roll is not only the quality of the Buddha horse, okay? It's your caramelized onion. So I have two large onions. Thinly slicing rolls. Pop the onions in a pan. Got some salted butter. Add a knob in there. This is not a knob. But that's probably enough. And then, oops. Pop it on the stove and let it cook on low heat. Low heat takes time. While the dough's rising, this is going. Multitasking, okay. This is what our onions are looking like. So I'm gonna season them. Like I said, low and slow. It's about an hour later, and the dough has a beautifully risen. This is the pan I'm gonna use for the pizza. I said it's gonna be deep dish. All of this dough going in here. Look at it. Look at it. There we go. I forgot to liberally oil the pan. Oil it liberally because you don't want it to not be able to come out okay back in here and now i'm gonna stretch it like that and then i'm gonna let it rest again our onions are also done look at them nice and caramelized and meanwhile i'm gonna preheat my oven preheat it at preheat preheat it at the highest setting you have and make sure that your grills elements are on both at the bottom and at the top i've prepared my other toppings which are green pepper it's not traditional to a buddha roll, but i love green pepper in my pizzas like non-negotiable mozzarella cheese for the pull cheddar cheese white cheddar cheese 
for the flavor. I prefer white because I like the color and it's not as strong as the orange. So our Buddha Wurst sausage that's still in its casing. Just peel it out of the casing. My hands look ashy. Oh my gosh. Our dough has been stretching for 15 minutes. As you can see now it's easier for me to spread it out. I'm using passata as my base. I'm running out. Let's spread it out. How good guys. Got some dried mixed herbs. And I like to add my cheese to the bottom. So it doesn't cover all the beautiful ingredients. I like it cheesy. Okay. Going on with the green pepper. Hupida man. We're gonna hupida already. Your Buddha was. I'm just gonna break it apart and spread it all over. So everybody to get some Buddha balls. Our caramelized onions. This looks so pretty. Like, look at it. And then a little bit more cheese from the top. I'm gonna place this in the preheated oven on the bottom bottom rack so the bottom cooks and crisps up first. And then when it's halfway cooked, pull it up to the top rack so the top cooks evenly and caramelizes and the cheese melts and gets all ooey gooey delicious. We are out of the oven. How pretty does that look? The crunchiness of the cheese, baby. Mm. Slide right out. I did it. Look at the bottom. <laughs> what would a Buddha Vors roll be without some tomato sauce? So I'm gonna go like that with it. Like. Baby, look at her. Look at her. Slice this baby up. If that's not deliciousness, I don't know what is. Look at it. Look at the bottom. Perfection. Let me take a bite and see if this is nostalgic and it properly reminds me of a Buddha roll. Ooh, this is not. Mm. Mm. I could cry. Oh my gosh. The bottom of the pizza. It's nice and crispy. The Buddha Vors is cooked deliciously. Caramelized onions. Crunch from the green peppers. I did a thing here. More? It is the South Africa's ultimate pizza. That's what I mean. The flavors are simple, but they pack a punch. Thank you for joining me to make South Africa's ultimate pizza. Cover all so guys we did it. If you like this video, video, if you like this video, press the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to catch you next time.